So as far as different types of, of fractures um, that we deal with, um, even the cervical spine has very peculiar uh, types of fractures that can happen um, and different ways of, of dealing with them. Um, occiput the C2, the cranial cervical dissociation, where literally you can have an internal decapitation. Um, C1, Jefferson uh, type fracture, it's a fracture of the ring itself. C2, odontoid fracture, these can be fractured in various ways. That's that little tooth that sticks up, right? That can be fractured off a type two where it kind of fractures just at the dens is the most common. And the Heyman fracture, which is kind of an explosive injury, it's the ring of C2 um, that results from an axial looting uh, on the head and usually some kind of motion forwards or, or back that explodes the ring of, of C2. And depending on the type of that, they're very often not uh, neurologic uh, injury because it's a, an expansion of the canal. They're just unstable because the head's sort of flopping on its own column versus the rest of the posterior uh, spinal um, canal uh, that becomes disconnected with it. Um, this is an example of the, the first, it's mostly a ligamentous injury. Um, and more and more of these patients, they used to die in the field, but more and more of these patients are coming to our trauma center and man, the EMS does an amazing job. They do an amazing job uh, in our trauma resuscitation uh, unit where the patients first presented shock trauma. And you can just even see the record prior to um, uh, going to see the patient that they have multiple arrests because they are, uh, have a very high medullary, um, almost brainstem type of injury. Um, and they're completely plegic. They've affected their respiratory and cardio uh, acceler accelerator centers. These are tough patients, um, but we're seeing more and more of them um, make it to the, to the hospital. Uh, C1 Jefferson fracture, as I mentioned, is a fracture, usually again, to axial loading to explode the ring of, of C1. Um, the odontoid fracture here is a, is a pretty brutal uh, C2 uh, dense, type 2 dense fracture. Um, it's actually pretty well aligned now, and you could treat this either through an odontoid screw or posteriorly by uh, posterior fusion. Um, and, and a hangman's fracture, this is a pretty bad one. Um, and a bad uh, dens fracture um, that's dislocated uh, posteriorly. Um, and so we can kind of see um, that some of these folks can have various degrees of stability. And this one's clearly a very unstable situation uh, with compression of the, the cord. In the hangman's fracture, um, we can kind of see the, the small um, lucency that's through um, the, the ring of C2. And so there's various types of trauma, the distraction flexion, um, distraction extension, extension, extension compression. Um, so we do see all of these and their management uh, can be quite different. There's a burst fracture, which is an actual loading type fracture, a fracture dislocation, which potentially is the worst where you've got these three columns of injury and you have to put all of this back together. Um, there is uh, disrupted facets. There is a perched facet that we can see in the middle. Um, it's just about to go over and a lock facet. And these can be tough to reduce. We, we try to reduce them uh, often closed. That is put the head and gardener wells tongs with various weight and tilt the head forward and pull that back up. It's very disconcerting. You feel this ka-chunk. Um, and you usually under ideal situations, try to do it when the patient's awake and can tell you, hey, uh, I'm getting numb or something doesn't feel right. Um, and, but sometimes that doesn't lock and, or doesn't work and you have to, to go to the OR for that, um, at least to reduce it and then uh, OR to diffuse it. Here's a tear, teardrop fracture, again, another axial loading and, and flexion uh, kind of injury. Lots of spinous process fractures, so-called clay shovel or uh, injury. We get multiple of these with a hyper uh, extension type of injury. Ligamentous injuries that may not show up on CT, um, but certainly MRI. Uh, we can see that the posterior spinous, uh, interspinous uh, ligaments are disrupted here. 
everyone, Ryan Rad here from NeurosurgeryTraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.